What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands Top 10 video and this time we're taking a look at the 10 worst legendary items in Borderlands 3. This list will include the worst of each weapon type, worst shield, worst grenade, worst class mod for each character, and worst artifact. I'll also include some dishonorable mentions with each one of these. If you enjoy these types of videos, please take a second to tap that subscribe button for more. With that, let's get started. Number 10. Coming in at number 10 on this list, let's start things off with shields. There are quite a few really bad options for shields in Borderlands 3, but for my money, the worst of the worst is the Rectifier. This shield's special ability is that when depleted, it will shock nearby enemies. And while that doesn't sound that bad by itself, heck, it might even be useful for some areas where there's lots of shielded enemies, this shield just does no damage with its special ability. It's basically like you're tickling their shields. So at this point, you're left with a depleted shield and enemies just laughing at you. Dishonorable mentions for shields go to the impaler the whiskey tango foxtrot the black hole and since it can't be anointed the scream of terror number nine Coming in at number 9 in the class mods category, let's break down the worst class mod for each Vault Hunter. First up for Zane is the Techspert. This one gives you a 15% chance to reset your Sentinel's duration and cooldown. And if that sounds completely worthless, well, that's because it is. There's really no reason to use this, especially when you have things like the Sea and Dead, the Antifreeze, the Executor, the Infiltrator, even the Spy class mod gives you much better perks. And just having a 15% chance to reset your Sentinel's duration is really pointless. For Moe's, I'm going with the Bear Trooper class mod. The idea of this class mod isn't bad, but there's two other Mo's comms that accomplish the same kind of thing better. Also, this class mod rolls with two skill tree perks that both accomplish basically the same task in Explosive Punctuation and Grizzled. Both of them reset your cooldown time a little bit, but neither one of them are really that necessary. Poor Flack has some of the worst class mods in the game, but I'm going to go with a tie between the Rack Commander, the Trainer, and the Friend Bot as the worst of the worst. The Rack Commander gives you the special ability to have one extra charge of rack attack, a skill that cools down so quick you shouldn't have a problem basically summoning it non-stop anyhow. The trainer gives you a 1 in 4 chance of confusing an enemy that your pet would have killed instead of killing them, and I don't really understand why you would want to do that, but whatever. And friend bot just gives your pet a little bit more damage and gives them a second win if you get a kill as flak. Finally, Amara's worst class mod was a tough decision for me, so I'm going to go with a tie between the Elementalist and the Nimbus. Honestly, Honestly, the phase zerker spiritual driver and muse comms are so good it really shines a light on just how bad her other options are number eight Coming in at number 8 is the grenade category. Now, like I mentioned in my best legendary items list, the grenade mods in Borderlands 3 aren't so much for killing enemies, but more for utility. But my pick for worst grenade doesn't even do utility very well, and that's the EMP grenade. Do you want a grenade that only works on shields? Well, unfortunately, I still don't really have the one for you. Not only does the EMP only work well on shields, it actually doesn't even work well on shields. That's right. The grenade that is supposed to be a shield destroyer is actually really bad at ripping shields. This honorable mentions go to the transfusion, the surge, and the chupa's organ. Number seven. Coming in at number seven is my pick for the worst artifact. Now, to me, this is an easy pick, but everybody seems to have their own least favorite. My pick is the Phoenix Tears, and it's so bad that I guarantee you that a few people watching this video probably didn't even know that it existed until now. What this artifact does is when you get a second win coming out of Fight for Your Life, your HP will be 100%. That's it. That's what this thing does. No damage bonuses, no added perks or helpful boosts, just a full HP bar, which you can have by getting the Guardian rank perk Resilient. Making this artifact worse, in my opinion, is how ridiculously hard it is to farm it. First, you have to go to the Splinterlands and walk up the path to the Phoenix. Luckily, it's no longer a rare spawn because this farm at launch was even worse. Then you have to kill the stupid thing three times before it's truly dead. And then when it finally drops something, it's only a 10% chance that that something is the Phoenix Tears. And furthermore, this artifact doesn't even spawn with variable abilities like most legendary artifacts do. It's just literally trash. This honorable mentions for artifacts go to the Cosmic Crater, Splatter Gun, and Commander Planetoid, but even those three are actually useful with the right prefix roll. Number six. At number six on this countdown, we're taking a look at the worst SMG in the game. This one has to be the DNA. This piece of junk is a Mayhem 6 exclusive from General Tron on Desolation's Edge. So already you would think that this thing would be better than most other SMGs, but you'd be sorely mistaken. The special ability on this one is that it shoots random elemental pairs of projectiles in a double helix pattern. Normally when a Malawan SMG shoots multiple projectiles, it leads to some crazy high damage, like the Flipper, Plasma Coil, or Kibbs Worth do, but the DNA is just 
just straight horrible. This honorable mentions go to the SF Force, the Vanquisher, the Ripper, the Hellfire, the Nine Volt, and the Mother 2. And all those are technically even worse than the DNA, but I put the DNA at number one because it is a Mayhem 6 exclusive. Number five. Coming in at number five on our countdown, let's take a look at the worst rocket launcher. And this one was tough because there's quite a few really bad ones, but my pick for the worst of the bunch has to be the Quadramizer. And I know for a fact that there are people watching this that either didn't know that this launcher existed or at the very least didn't even know that its drop source had been moved from the Rampager to Dreg and Rage from the mother of Grogan's in Anvil. This launcher seemed like a really cool idea, basically giving you the same attack that the Rampager does when he jumps around the arena. It's just, it doesn't do any damage. So it's just a really bad launcher. Plus it shoots slow as hell. Like if you need to get a second wind by using this to kill like a small trash mob enemy, well, you're gonna be disappointed. Dishonorable mentions for rocket launchers go to the Tunguska. Yes, even after the buff and the Satisfaction Launcher from DLC 3. Boom. Four. Coming in at number four is my pick for the worst pistol, and it pains me to combine those words in that order since there are so many amazing pistols in this game, but I guess they can't all be amazing. For me, the Link has always stood out as a stinker since this legendary Atlas pistol can't spawn with an anointment. But there's another pistol that's equally as bad, if not worse, and that's the Scorpio. Now at launch, the Scorpio couldn't even drop. It was in the game code and it was supposed to drop from Judge Hightower, but for whatever reason, they never assigned it a drop rate. So it sat there dormant for months. And honestly, unless they buff it, it needs to go back into stasis. So I'm giving number four as a combo victory for the Link and the Scorpio. Congratulations, you two, you suck. This honorable mentions for pistols go to the Magnificent, the AAA, the Baby Maker, and the Love Drill. Number three. At number three on this countdown, we jump over to assault rifles. Now there is a ton of amazing assault rifles, but the bad ARs are very, very bad. And for me, the worst of them is the Bearcat. For God's sake, this gun was a pearlescent on Borderlands 2. So when I saw it returning for Borderlands 3 as a legendary, well, I was expecting it to at least be useful, but I couldn't have been more wrong. This gun shoots out a horizontal row of grenades, and I know what you're thinking, sweet, Mo should be able to wreck with that. Well, yeah, she should be able to, but if if even Moe's can't make this gun work, you know it sucks. Hell, this footage is with me using a 300 over 90 annoyment, and the first hit is still embarrassingly bad. Even in arms race, this thing is absolutely worthless and it drops. It's bad in normal mode, bad in mayhem mode. It's just bad. This honorable mentions go to the Tribolt, the Mutant, and the gun that I probably would have picked if the Bearcat wasn't in the game, the Hand of Glory. Number two. Coming in at number two in the role of the worst shotgun in a game full of amazing shotguns is the Creeping Death. Again, here's another shotgun that a lot of players probably don't even know about since it has a very specific drop source in the Mother of Grogan's. This shotgun shoots out a green explosive round that sits on the ground waiting for you to reload and then homes in on the nearest enemy and proceeds to do literally no damage. Oh, and did I mention it can only spawn a corrosive? This thing is just literally trash. Like if I see a creeping death, even on normal mode, I am just leaving it on the ground 90% of the time. This honorable mentions go to the TK's wave and tidal wave, the Garcia, which actually used to be great until they messed up the fire rate. The Sledge's shotgun, please buff this gun gearbox, I'm begging you. The frequency, the blind sage, chandelier, and even the horizon. Number one. Finally, coming in at the illustrious number one position on this list is the worst sniper rifle in Borderlands 3. And this was actually the first item I thought of when I decided to do a worst items list, the Malik's Bane. This sniper's special ability is that shots ricochet and you can do an alternate firing mode that turns the gun into a shotgun where it actually does a smidge of damage. Making matters worse for this sniper is that it drops from an enemy that we mentioned earlier, the Phoenix. That's right, this stupid gun also has a 10% drop rate from the Phoenix, but lucky for us, us, it can world drop. Yay. The Malik's Bane is an absolute meme in the Borderlands 3 community, a symbol of how bad a truly bad legendary can actually be. This honorable mentions go to the wood blocker. Yep, still bad even after the buff. The tank man shield, which for a Mayhem 4 exclusive sure feels a lot more like a green or blue rarity weapon than a legendary. And the NARP. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of worst legendary gear in Borderlands 3. If you did, then hit that like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, let me know in the comment section below what your least favorite items are. And don't forget to subscribe for more Borderlands content, including playthroughs, top tens, item guides, and consistent hotfix and patch notes videos. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.